Traditions, values, culture. These are the things that help us remember where we came from. It's time for Family Heritage Stories. I'm Doug Jessup. And I'm Nisha Daguerin, and welcome to Family Heritage Stories, where we talk about what makes us, things like traditions, values, and culture. How are these things passed down from generation to generation? Through deeds, through words, and through stories. Part of Family Heritage Stories is passing along good stories, but you know what? It's also passing along those hard stories, those things when you had to struggle. With another episode of Family Heritage Stories, I'm Nisha Daguerre, and I'm sitting down today with Caitlin Mangelson. Caitlin, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for being here. I want to start right at the beginning with you. Tell me where you grew up. So I grew up in a very tiny town called Burlington, Wyoming. Um, there was, when I was growing up, the sign said 250 in the population. So it's just a very tiny little town. You Not made much it there. 251. Yes. Yes. <laughs> siblings i am seven of eight that's a lot of kids yeah so i come from a big family it's always a full house very fun um my mom's family have lived in burlington or nearabouts for generations so there was always lots of family around aunts uncles second cousins third cousins i knew all of my grandma's sisters and brothers. I called my mom's first cousins by aunt and uncle. So very large family. What was Lenny like? So when she was really little in the hospital, we didn't see much of her personality. You can't see much, you can't show much personality if you can't breathe. Once she started breathing, then all of this personality came out. She's very stubborn, very, very determined. Um, if there was something she wanted to do, she would figure out a way to do it. And she'd figure out a way to do it her way. And very social. She loved to be around people. Loved to be around family. How did you reconcile your hopes and dreams for this baby with what the reality was? Time. Time. Um, I think in some ways that was something we struggled with the whole eight years that we had her with us is that her life would never look like what you imagine when you when you find out you're expecting a baby you have all of these dreams and expectations that you may not even realize you have until they're not possible anymore um but i think we also came to peace of like we we can give linnea a really good life where she is we tried really hard and decided early on we weren't going to let her physical limitations or her medical complexities stop us from doing what we wanted to do as a family. So if we wanted to go camping, we'd go camping. We'd figure out a way to do it. We'd figure out a way to get a generator or a battery pack, whatever we needed to power her medical supplies so we could still go. We took her camping. We took her to family reunions. Lots of those family reunions, she ended up sick and we had to spend a week in the hospital because she got sick, but we felt like it was worth it to her and to the rest of us that we could spend time with family and spend time out and about and not lock ourselves away. What could she do? What did she like to do? So it depends what time of life we're talking about. She loved to sing songs, um, loved Moana. Moana was her very favorite. I had a feeling that that's favorite. what you were going to say. Yes. Because I'm looking at what's in front of you. Yes. <laughs> and, I, and I see Moana. What is this? Why is it special to you? So when Linny was three years old, she had a brain injury. She got the flu and it compromised her airway and she was without oxygen for 10 minutes. That caused extensive brain damage. So where before she wasn't really physically limited, after that, she was confined to a wheelchair. Um, she had very little use of her hands. She had some use of her left hand, basically no use of her right hand. And it was very hard to find toys that she could do because they're just not designed for kids with her needs. Well, we found this at a toy store and they had a demo out and we showed it to Linny and Linny 
fell in love with it. She already loved little figures. She loved their names. And what this thing does is it plays the music for the character when you put it on top. And since it could like magnetize on top and then play her songs, she just loved it. So this went everywhere with her. Hours and hours. hours of the Tony box. All the time. Yes. And if it died and the charger died, then we had to get the charger quick or she would be mad. But it's something she could do. She could do it. Yes. That so this is her favorite character. Yes. Who else did you bring? Who else did she love? She loved everybody. Everybody. Okay. <laughs> she loved all of them. Um, we liked Coco. Mm -hmm. She really liked doing Doc McStuffins when she was at the hospital or at doctor's appointments because it was the doc is in and he'll fix you up. And she just thought that was funny. Um, Daniel Tiger was a favorite. And this reminds you of her. Yeah. When you Absolutely. look at that, you think of her. Oh, yes. Yeah. She was how old when she passed away? Eight years old. Yeah. Eight years old. She had she'd been in the hospital just six weeks before. Um, bad cold that turned into pneumonia. And it was the sickest she'd been in a really long time. And Josh and I kind of had to face like, are we starting a long decline here? Um, which was a scary thought. It's like we've already done so much and we're so good where we are. It was hard to face. Is this going to be a long, slow decline? Um, but six weeks later, she was in the hospital again, even worse. And her lungs just, I think her lungs just gave out. I think she was ready to go. Um, yeah, and so she, she passed away. We were both there. We were holding her singing to her and and it was it was the right time she's a big part of your family those cute kids in that picture yeah how are they doing they're doing okay they have their they have their moments we all do but i think that we've tried really hard to just say hey we can talk we can laugh we can cry we can just feel it all and we just all feel it together and that's okay how do you want to be remembered? It's not just a question for old people. And you and Josh saw the power of the Tony box and you want her legacy to live on with other children receiving that. Tell us about that. Yeah, so when she passed, we had several family members and friends ask us if we had any particular charity or foundation that we would like people to donate to in her memory. And we decided we wanted to do something personal and so we thought about children's hospitals because children's hospitals are, they're one of my very favorite places. They're this incredible place where it's both a horribly sad, depressing place to be because you've got kids who are facing pain and worry and fear. Their siblings are facing it. Their parents are facing it. No family should have to go through those things. And at the same time, they're these magical wonderful places because children's hospitals are where communities come together to support these kids and to support these brave parents. And so you have music therapists and you have child life therapists and art therapists and you have community bringing in pizza parties and toys and books and blankets just to support these kids and bring them a little bit of happiness. And we certainly, I mean, we have a closet full of blankets that we've received from hospital stays. Um, and this was something that we're like, this is thing that kids can play with. Even if you're stuck in a bed, even if you're hooked up to IVs and tubes and you can play this. And even kids who have special needs, who have disabilities like Linny, it's accessible to them. Um, and for Linny, it was a bridge. She used it as a way to communicate with people that she couldn't communicate with normally. Um, her very first surgery nicked her vocal cords. So her vocal cords were paralyzed. And so she spoke, but it was in a very, very tiny, harsh little whisper. Pretty much only her family could understand her. But she would use this box to communicate with people and be like, hey, let me show you this cool thing. And she loved that it allowed her to play and interact be like other kids. Yes. Yeah.
Now you are hoping to raise money. Yes. So that all of these hospitals have yeah. access to so these. So we started a GoFundMe. Our plan is to, we would love to give Tony boxes to as many children's hospitals as we can. Our kind of plan is that we would have a set of Tonys similar to what we have here that are keyed to the box that can be, we can then give to the child life specialists at the pre-op department. So when you've got a couple kids who are in to get their tonsils out or in to get surgery, they have this that they can bring into their room as something to distract them and make the waiting time easier. And we'd love to have one for the th therapy, like the rehab departments, the PICUs, just the regular floor, anywhere where the kids are that they just need something to play with. Tell me the hospitals that you are excited to make the donations to. So we want to do Primary Children's Hospital here in Utah. She spent her last three years of care here and just received wonderful care from them and their doctors and surgeons. Um, we definitely want to support Mott Children's Hospital in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Josh and I like to joke we grew up in Michigan because so much of our family growth and who we are as a couple, who we are as a family started there with Lenny's story and our time at CS Mott. So CS Mott Children's Hospital. And we also spent a year in Pittsburgh, the Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh. If we can, if we're able to, we would love to spread out to more children's hospitals because all children's hospitals are essentially the same. That's what I said about communities coming together to support families going through such difficult challenges, unimaginably difficult challenges. And that just holds a special place in our heart. So we'd love to do nationwide in Columbus, Ohio. That's where my husband grew up. Um, would love to do Seattle Children's Hospital. That's where we have a special niece who has gotten a lot of her medical care at Seattle. So all children's hospitals. You would love the Tony <laughs> box to go across the yes. country. All right, if people want to help and find the GoFundMe, what should they do? So I think that we're gonna be putting a link up, but it is under, it's a GoFundMe, it's under Linney's Hospital Treasures. Linney is L-I-N-N-I-E, apostrophe S, and it's her hospital treasures. And they're just the Tony box and her angel deer lovey that were two things that just brought her so much comfort in the hospital. They, anytime we went to the hospital, anytime we went to a doctor's appointment, those two things had to come with us. How would you like Lenny to be remembered? I think the things that I want to remember about Lenny is her joy and enthusiasm for life her joy and enthusiasm for people and building connections with people and relationships with people and to slow down and take the time to connect with people, especially if they're different from you, especially if they maybe don't connect the same way that you do. It's worth it. It's, she's just an incredible little girl and the people who took the time to get to know her and connect with her fell in love with her. She charmed everybody. So that's what I would. Because you knew her, you've been changed. Absolutely, yeah. How would you like to be remembered? I think I'd want to be remembered as a mother and a wife who tried her best, worked hard, was able to do hard things and stay positive and stay happy and find the joy in whatever circumstances you're in. Join the journey, no matter how tough it gets. Yeah. The bumps in the road have yes. been many, but you've held on. Yeah. I like that. Thank you for sharing her legacy with all of us. You're welcome. With another episode of Family Heritage Stories, I'm Nisha DeGaring. It's our honor to be able to help people remember where they came from. If stories aren't passed down from generation to generation, the stories are lost, and it's as though those people never existed. So how do you want to be remembered? With another episode of Family Heritage Stories, I'm Nisha DeGaring. And I'm Doug Jessup.